Hello and thank you for watching my video today. Today I'm going to be showing you how I'm planning a lesson. Specifically, this is a lesson for my 8th grade U.S. History class and you can see that it's a unit on sectionalism and especially the angst that a lot of Americans were feeling as they were trying to define their new national identity and figuring out exactly where they were going to fit in. Now this in particular lesson is going to be on comparing and contrasting northern industrialization with southern plantation life. It's going to be the first lesson of this unit and as a result of that I'm really emphasizing here an introductory sort of lesson where I'm getting students to think about a lot of the broad topics we're going to be studying in this unit, as well as using some of the specific skills that I want them to be developing. Um, this is a unit where I want to emphasize compare and contrast and analysis, so I'm going to have in my, in my objective my students compare and contrast northern industrialization with southern plantation life. For my assessment, I'm going to have students write a letter from a northern factory worker to a southern relative explaining the differences between their lives, or vice versa, they could write from the southern relative to the northern factory worker, and I'd be happy with that too. You can see I've already got my standards queued up and ready to go. I've also done a lot of research for this lesson already, getting a lot of materials together in terms of primary sources, worksheets I've found online, other tools that I'm going to use in planning this lesson. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the ground running. Um, so I'm going to begin with bell work. I think it's a great way of engaging my students in the lesson I'm going to be having. And I'm going to ask my students to describe the differences that existed between North and South in the early 1800s. Um, this is important to me because I know my students at this point in the year already know a lot about the differences between the North and the South. I'm going to get them to really engage with this through an analysis of um, what they already know. It's going to cue the prior knowledge. It's going to be very helpful as we get ready to start to talk about this new unit. Um, I'm going to then have prayer after that. We always start with prayer. And for this week's prayer, or for today's prayer, excuse me, I'm going to have them read an excerpt from President Obama's speech in Selma last year. It was a great speech that called for unity, um, and I think that's something that's going to be really important as we talk about the different divides that have existed throughout American history. And then using that prayer is going to be a great way to get them thinking about that sort of thing. We'll take a little bit of time to recap and have a guided discussion to go over the bell work. And to really set the stage, I think I'll also do some interactive lecture during this period, to get my students to talk about the differences that are existing between um, these two regions and to figure out what they already know and where I need to step in. Um, my eighth grade class is very small, only nine students, and I know that they're a very high achieving group, so I'm anticipating we can really get the ground running, but I'm going to be using this guided discussion time as a chance to really figure out and flesh out what it is they know, what it is they don't really know as well, so that I know where to intervene and where to support them with information. Now, my main way of conveying content today um, and getting students to really engage with the material is going to be having them work with some primary sources. Um, specifically, we are going to be looking at a primary source first describing work shifts at the Lowell Mills, these textile mills in Massachusetts, which are really indicative of northern factory life and factory conditions in their early 18, uh, to middle 1800s. Um, so this is a really complicated document that my students are going to have to analyze. So the first time we analyze a document like this, I'm going to help them. Students are going to investigate and annotate the document, um, answering questions like, I'm not going to list them all out here, but I'll put some just so I can remember what I'm thinking, actually do the specifics. How long workers had to work per day, um, how long they, got, um, they were given for breaks, um, and I'm also going to have them speculate about the nature of, of working conditions more generally. Um, but I think what's very important is that I am going to be modeling exactly what is happening here. Um, I'm again lucky because I only have eight students in this eighth grade class. I am allowed to, because of that, I'm able to really model for them exactly what to do and to operate in a more pretty informal way. So here I'm straddling the line between what I'd consider an interactive lecture where I'm using this document and having the students take notes and sort of showing them how I want them to do primary source analysis. I'm also going to consider this a little bit of guided discussion because it's so interactive. The students are going to be so um, involved in the process of analyzing this document with me that I think it's really a little bit of both. And I think that it's, it's you know, me modeling what they're going to do, but also already giving them a chance to work with the document in a pretty minimalistic way. Now, what I'm going to have them start working on it in a more fully fledged way is when we bring in another document. Um, now, oops, I should write how long that takes first. Um, I'm going to have students complete a primary source worksheet um, that compares the rules at a mill, which again, just like the Lowell mills that we've already seen, to those at a southern plantation. 
Um, these are kind of startling because a lot of the students who think that plantation workers would have no freedom whatsoever find that in some cases they actually had more freedom than some of the northern factory workers. I'm going to have them work in pairs here because, again, I want to start releasing the reins to them, but I still want them to have some guidance and some ability to get some checks. Um, I have a pretty regimented pair, pair work system at this point where students know the kind of partners they want to be working with. This will be a good chance for them to start analysis, uh, anal analysis of the primary source document on their own a bit more while still having some people to go to for help. Now again, I also know that this is, they're going to need additional help as they figure out how to break down um, and analyze these sorts of documents. So we'll pause and we'll have the class discuss the first half of the worksheet um, as a group. Again, only eight students. It's going to be, this is the kind of thing we can do pretty quickly and I think it's really helpful for me as I'm, you know, always working on formative assessment to kind of check in on my students and figure out what they're going. I'll obviously be circulating during the primary source partner work time, but it's helpful to have a, cl a whole class guided discussion to sort of take the temperature of the room as a whole. Um, after that, I'll give students a chance to work on the second half of the worksheet. And then we will discuss the worksheet as a whole as well. Um, I, all really, I really like this format of having students mix um, partner or individual work time with opportunities for um, more whole class discussion because I think it, enable, it enables the students to have a variety of ways to work with these documents and to really figure out um, exactly how they want to interact with the text in a variety of different contexts. I think that's an important set of skills for them to focus on developing and I enjoy giving them multiple opportunities to get help as well. We'll end with an exit card where my students are going to write one similarity between northern factories and southern plantations as well as one difference. I think this will be a good um, very simple assessment um, for me to sort of figure out and take, um, how we have done so far. And we'll end with um, assigning homework. I'm going to have my students suppl to supplement the sort of primary source documents that we've been looking at today. I'm going to have them take a look at some secondary sources. We'll do a guided reading from the textbook. And I've already looked it up. It's going to be chapter 12, section 1. So that'll be day 1. Um, I, you can see I've timed it out. It's going to be 40 minutes, which is exactly how long my class goes. So that's good. I'm going to start planning for day 2 now. This is going to be a two-day lesson. I'm waiting for Microsoft Excel to respond a little bit. Perfect. Here we go. You can see that I like to have a little timer that shows me as I'm planning exactly how long a lesson is going to take. I find that that helps to make sure that I know exactly how long I have, make sure I don't run over time. So again, I'm going to start with bell work. Um, I'm going to have my students ask what sorts of freedoms were possible for a northern factory worker that weren't for even the most free slave. Um, this question is rooted out of something that I tried last year when trying this lesson. Um, I found that many of my students in discovering that northern factory workers were limited in freedom said, oh, maybe slavery wasn't so bad. And I do want to remind them that slavery was really bad. And we try to bring in that perspective again. Um, after this belt work, we're going to have prayer. We're going to use faith and D for today's prayer. Um, like I did a lot yesterday, I'm going to have a guided discussion of the bell work. I think it generally gets the students a little bit more awake and ready to start participating in class. Um, and then for the remainder of this class, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, we are going to, as a class, um, play a video game um, that describes what it was like to work at the Lowell Mills. Um, this is an interactive text-based game that I found um, online when preparing materials for this unit. Um, and I really enjoy this game because it gives students a lot of chances to simulate what it was like to work at the mills. They take the role of a young girl who's navigating her um, the world of factory work as a new entrant into the workforce and has to decide what sorts of choices she wants to make. It really helps them to connect with someone living at that time. I think that's going to be great. And again, because I only have eight students, we have a lot of flexibility to play this as a class and make guided decisions as they go. Um, now, that being said, I still want to hold students accountable for paying attention. So as we play, I'm going to have students complete an accompanying graphic organizer. Again, holding them accountable, making sure they have a way of organizing their thinking. And we're going to discuss the, how the choices in that game 
um, reflected choices real women had to make at the time. Again, I also like bringing in multiple perspectives. Um, our textbook doesn't really emphasize the role that women um, uh, played economically at this time, so I love that I'm getting to bring in something new um, into the classroom. Um, again, I'm hesitant. I'm not really sure this doesn't fit nicely into the sort of methodology that we've just talked about. I'm going to list method a video game, and I'm also going to list a guided discussion because I think that's what, really what we're doing. Um, I'm going to end with my assessment. I'm really content with how much of the content we've been able to end so far. So I'm going to have students write a letter. Actually, I'll just copy and paste that. This will be a great opportunity for students to really show me that they have learned a lot about what these um, different working situations were like. Um, and it'll be a great way to get them started and as we start wondering, well, what caused these sorts of working dynamics? What with the effects of them on different social outcomes in both the North and the South. So I'm really happy with how that works. And I'm going to have them for homework. They're going to play the Lowell Mills game again. Um, but this time, I want them to take different cho different choices in the game and figure out how that affects their outcome. Um, and hopefully, by all of the students taking different choices in the game, we'll record a lot of new elements in the game. We'll be able to talk about that in a great way and we have our discussion uh, tomorrow in class. So I'm excited for that. And when looking at the at the lesson as a whole, I'm pretty pleased. Oh, let me fix that. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with how it's turned out. I think we've got a lot of different um, sorts of methods being used. It's primary source heavy, which as a social studies teacher, I'm really proud of. But we're also engaging with secondary sources, new media like video games. And students are in, interacting with content in a lot of ways. I'm starting off by modeling and letting the students see how I would analyze these documents. But I'm gradually releasing more and more um, uh, control over the learning process to them. And then I really am happy with my assessment. I can't wait to read those letters. I think it's going to be a great lesson. Uh, hopefully you learned something from this as well. Thank you very much for watching my video. Hope you have a great day. Take care.